Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Keystone Virtual College Exploration. This program is a partnership between PACAC and StriveScan for all Pennsylvania students. A few housekeeping tips before we get started this evening. Uh, if you have questions for the panelists, please enter them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and they will be monitoring them throughout the session. Uh, this is a webinar feature of Zoom, so your camera and microphone are off. So again, the best way to engage with the panelists is via the Q&A chat at the bottom of the screen. You signed up for this session today at the PACAC website. If you'd like to look at our full schedule of sessions until November 6th, you can visit www.pacac.org slash virtual. Uh, this session will also be recorded and you could view this recording or um, any of our other recordings from all of our sessions throughout our program at the same website, www.pacac.org slash virtual. And now I will turn it over to Wesley from Bennington College. Hi folks, welcome. Um, my name is Wesley. I'm uh, an admissions counselor at Bennington College. I'm also an alum of the college. I graduated in 2018. Um, so to tell you a little bit about Bennington, we are a small progressive liberal arts college in southwestern Vermont. So it's pretty rural. Um, we're right in the corner of the state next to the New York state border and Massachusetts state border. Um, we're a very small school. We have about 700 students. So even in the world of small progressive liberal arts schools, we're, we're under a thousand. So we're on the smaller side. Um, we were founded in 1929. We were originally a women's college for about 350 women, really founded under the belief that the most valuable education a student can get is one that they're actively involved in shaping. Um, we believe that education is not just something that you receive from a school, but it's something you very actively uh, design and take for yourself. We've also always believed that faculty are most valuable when they're active in their fields. So that means every, every teacher at Bennington is also uh, working on their next book, they're not working on their next play or the next uh, journal, uh, art scholarly article for a journal. So there's a nice sense that faculty are not just mentors, but also potential peers, potential collaborators, um, and also career resources for outside Bennington as they have these active career networks. Um, we have about a 10 to one student faculty ratio. So small class sizes is really important to, to the sort of Bennington uh, model of education. The biggest class you'll be in is around 16 to 18 people. The average class is between eight and maybe a dozen students. Um, but in fact, after your first semester, you can design your own courses and do one on one classes with faculty. Um, you can also find a group of students to work with um, and design your own course. So that that small classroom setting, even in the one on one uh, context is, is really important to, to what we do. Um, Bennington has an open curriculum, which means you are in control of the classes you take. There are no required courses. Um, in, the, in a more typical liberal arts model, when you go to college, you pick an area of study that you wanna focus on, you major in that, but then you also have general education requirements that you need to complete, like a math class, a couple math classes, a couple English classes, a um, couple of all the main cores. Bennington, we let the student control their entire curriculum. Um, so you can think of us as a build your own major school, where instead of selecting one area or maybe two areas like a double major, uh, Bennington students are pulling from two, three, maybe even four different areas of study to make a unique education. Um, so what that sort of looks like is, is that in, in, a, in a more typical uh, liberal arts model, as, as a sophomore, you declare a major. You, you sort of uh, declare with the school that you are going to focus in this one area and that's what you're gonna get your degree in. That moment of declaring your major at Bennington, we refer to as writing the plan essay. So students work closely with a faculty advisor um, and they help them, they help the student edit this essay where they talk about what they wanna study. Again, could be two, three, four things. Um, how they want to study them, why they want to study them, uh, how do these things relate to each other. Um, if a student is interested in film 
and literature. Um, why, how do these things connect? Are you interested in writing movies? Are you interested in writing about movies? Are you interested in adapting literature into movies? So all of these questions students ask themselves in this essay. Um, they also sort of talk about what, what they can imagine themselves doing after school, what might be uh, fulfilling work that would um, not only help them make a living, but, but um, also be, be meaningful to them and in line with, with what they care about. Um, so when students write this plan essay, they turn it into their faculty advisor. Um, this is late September, so we're just around the point where uh, sophomores that this time of the year are waiting to hear back uh, from the dean's office with a list of faculty that are going to meet with them. So we call this uh, the plan committee. And this committee is comprised of three faculty who have been placed with you based on the different areas of study you talked about in your plan. Um, so I mentioned I'm, I'm an alum of, of the college. Um, my uh, initial plan was about film and literature. Um, and by my sophomore year, I took an anthropology class and really started to fall in love with documentaries and was interested in using writing, critical writing, anthropology, and filmmaking to sort of make my own major of documentary filmmaking and film studies. So, so very individualized um, approach to, to declaring a major. You have really your own unique set of, of interests. So when you work with, with this committee um, in, in mid-November, uh, you, you get some advice about classes to take, faculty to work with, um, and areas of study to, to push your, your, uh, your plan. Because uh, we, we like to think of the, the plan committee as a chance to help students identify maybe gaps in their education that they built for themselves. So for example, if a student comes to Bennington and they're an actor, they're a director, um, they're a writer, they want to make movies and they want to act and play and write characters. If they write their plan essay about character design, which they absolutely could, um, and if they don't write anything about psychology, philosophy, the social sciences, um, that's exactly the sort of student that the plan committee is going to stop and say, okay, it's great that you're, you're so interested in this from a creative perspective, but if you really want to know how people work, you should approach this topic from an academic perspective too. So you can think of Bennington as a sort of place where the artists are being encouraged to try the sciences and the academics and uh, the scientists are being encouraged to dance and, and paint. Um, we really wanna create well-rounded students that have um, a very holistic view of, of the thing that they're interested in. Um, so in, after this, this plan committee, um, you, you're really encouraged to rewrite your plan essay. Um, we like to call the plan essay a living document. Um, it's never quite finished. It's, it's always adapting to how you are and who you are and, and what your interests are right now. Um, when I started out, I was just a film and literature student. And then I added anthropology and became a documentary student. But by my junior year, I realized that I really enjoyed uh, talking about movies more than actually making them. I wanted to talk about how movies uh, acted as a form of media um, and sort of uh, gave us certain narratives uh, and, and ideas about society and life. So I became really a media studies student and a literature student. Um, and those were, those were themes that were in my education for the first two years, but it wasn't until my junior year that I was sort of able to connect these pieces. So I rewrote my plan. Um, and this time redescribed how, how film fit into my plan and that really uh, film was a smaller portion of it. I was interested in writing and film and music and television and all sorts of things. So those sorts of realizations, um, I, I could have made at other colleges perhaps, but I definitely wouldn't be able to articulate them in the way that Bennington really encouraged me to. Um, being able to, to be in charge of the classes you take, um, why you take them, and, and being able to describe exactly what you study um, is pretty unique. So um, Bennington students, you know, graduate with a great ability to describe themselves. Um, so they can say, yes, I was a film and literature uh, student to one person, but the next person who asks a question, 
Um, you can go into how you were interested in uh, creative nonfiction, personal essays, memoir, short fiction. Um, and you can really sort of dig in deep. Um, each student at Bennington really has a unique plan that they've built. Um, no two students have, have the same plan, the same sets of classes. Um, so there's a nice sense that, that everybody is making original work um, and it's, it's an inspiring energy on campus because everyone is, is doing their own thing so, so intensely. Um, as a senior, we, we want students to complete what we call a senior project, um, which is a, a piece of advanced work that you'll complete over the course of your senior year in addition to taking classes. So um, a lot of students will write a critical essay, um, a research paper, um, if you're a performance artist, whether you're, you know, you're a musician or uh, a dance student or a theater student, a lot of performances happen. Um, senior concerts, senior music concerts are some of the, the most fun moments on, on campus as a student. Um, students put on their own uh, visual art exhibitions. People write their own plays uh, and they get a friend to, to put on that play as, as their senior work. Um, students write novels and collections of poetry. So it's really a way of sort of summing up everything that you talked about in your plan and this, this very specific place that you landed, you know, what does that look like if we make a project out of those ideas? Um, so where I landed with media studies and film, I wrote a, a collection of, of nonfiction essays that talked about um, all these, these different things I was interested in and sort of critiquing the idea of, of criticism itself. Um, so I, I worked with many different media studies topics like uh, news channels and social media, different books and television shows. Um, so that was my way of sort of manifesting everything that I was talking about in my plan into this, this project. Um, senior work is, is a really exciting way of sort of bridging the gap between um, your work as as a, as a college student and um, the sort of work that you wanna to continue to do after school. So that's the, that's the sort of plan process and that's how uh, students go about building their own major. Um, it's uh, pretty different than, than the typical uh, major minor system. Um, and we, we, we really believe that, that students with, with a lot of passion and energy um, and people who, who devote themselves to lots of different areas of study to get a well-rounded idea of, of what they love. We, we really believe that's a, a, one of the most valuable forms of education. So we're a very small school and we have a very uh, unique uh, approach to, to learning and, and, and figuring out your interests, um, but it's a very strong one uh, and a bit larger than, than our actual size. Um, so the other major thing about Bennington that makes us pretty different besides this, this approach to taking classes and declaring your studies is what we call field work term. Um, so six weeks uh, out of every winter from early January to mid-February, every student holds an internship. Um, and this internship can be really anywhere um, at any kind of workplace in anywhere in the world. So really take advantage of it as an opportunity, uh, not only to um, see what kind of work you would like and you would find fulfilling after school, but also what, what kind of places do you wanna see? What kind of places do you wanna try living in? Um, so it's, it's popular to try different industries, try different kinds of work, um, you know, maybe work with a publishing company, one, one field work term, um, work with a government organization, another work at a hospital, um, students really typically form a sort of eclectic, an eclectic mix of, of internships and opportunities. We also don't want to constrict it just to internships. Um, it can be an apprenticeship, it can be a consultation position or shadowing someone. Um, we, we want you to get real world experience in these fields um, that you're delving into on campus. So on one hand, you're really, you know, in charge of taking your own classes, declaring your studies, um, and really figuring out who you are academically and intellectually, creatively. And then in field work term, you're like applying all of those things and seeing what kind of workplace would make sense for you. 
Um, so a nice sort of process of elimination or, or at least expanding of your horizons that I think a lot of graduates uh, struggle with in maybe the first five years or so after, after graduating, taking some time to actually find your path. Um, I think Bennington uh, sort of pushes up against the idea that, that, that you always need to have a straight path in your career. Uh, there are a lot of great careers where you can get a specialized degree or a specialized education in one thing and you can excel and be successful in that field. Um, but there are also a lot of students, many of them are Bennington students, who uh, have a wide variety of interests and have very specific work and projects that they want to do. Um, that, that maybe that career path is, is less straight and is more zigzagging and, and curving and, and touching other points that, um, you know, may, may be stepping stones to, to your next position. So working in nonprofits, working in private companies, again, in, in government organizations um, or internationally non-government organizations uh, uh, like UNICEF, um, but really anywhere around the world or anywhere in the country, um, we, we send students. Um, again, this is six weeks every winter. So we have a fall semester from uh, early September to early or mid uh, December. We have a couple weeks off in the end of December for holiday break. And then in early January, from January 2nd or January 3rd to mid-February, um, all of our students are somewhere in the world uh, doing work for six weeks. And then our spring semester begins in late February and ends in late May. Uh, so, so we do end our semester or in our academic year, we do end it about a month later than other schools. Just something to, to know. Um, when looking for a field work term uh, for an internship, that's a, a big, big thing. Um, some, some schools require an internship. Usually it's one or maybe two. Um, and it's typically as, as an upperclassman. So as a freshman, you know, you, you really, the expectations are that you're gonna have an internship, um, you know, in a few months. When, once you arrive on campus in September, by, by mid-November, you need to know what you're doing for field work term and submit it with the field work term office. Um, so if you don't know where to look, you don't know how to start trying to find a place to work, um, we have a field work term office of counselors that are there to help you figure out what kind of work you want to do, what areas of study you want to explore in the work field, um, what kind of workplace you want to be in, what kind of setting you want to be in. They'll really just counsel you and start to present a few options and um, different, different resources to help you look for those, those opportunities. We, we also have um, two really useful databases. Um, one is a current jobs uh, posting database. So uh, people who have heard of Bennington and want a student to work for them over field work term um, can post a job opening on this database, on this forum. Um, and we get some like five, 600 uh, opportunities a year. And even though we have 700 students at Bennington, um, there's still a, a, a hundred or a couple hundred opportunities still left by the time that everyone has found their field work term. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities to, to look through on, on that, we call it Handshake. It's our own platform. Um, and we also have a past employer database. That's really useful as well. We, we keep record of the past 20 some odd years of Bennington internships um, and we keep contact information for the employers. You can also see in, in many cases who work, which Bennington student worked for, for this employer. And if they're still a student and they haven't already graduated, you can you know, ask them if, what their experience was like, um, if they enjoyed it, if it was worth it. Um, so those, those are two databases, the, the past database and the current jobs posting forum um, that are really useful. With, with the current forum, there's a portal for you to submit your resume and cover letter. Um, right through the website. So that's, that's super easy. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll help the fieldwork term office can help counsel students to get out your resume and your cover letter, uh, you know, just through email to, to these contacts. So again, internship every year um, creates a, a really interesting conversation between your semesters, your fieldwork terms, 
and your next semester. Um, so your, your year is this sort of sandwich of, of campus experience and, um, and real world work experience. Um, so, you know, as your, your interests change, you know, the way that you think about them being applied in the working world really changes over the course of your, your few years. So that's a little bit about uh, field work term. Um, next, I'm gonna just share my screen and show um, an image of campus. So this is the Bennington College campus. Um, up here at, at the very top uh, is the furthest point on campus. That's our, our music building. Um, and uh, all of these white houses down here are student houses. Um, as well as some of these boxy white houses in the trees on the left and these uh, sort of diagonal houses up there. So when we were founded in, in 1929, um, the, the first class of Bennington uh, students lived in these white colonial houses. So we take 700 students, um, some of whom are off campus or um, in other sort of housing opportunities. There's some that are off in the woods in the back of the image um, that are that are semi off campus that some students live in. But uh, about 90% of students are living in one of these 18 houses. Um, it's community based living. So instead of being in a, in a big dorm building, um, you are in a house of 35 to 40 peers. Um, your the housemates are, are all different genders, uh, come from different backgrounds, have different interests, they're different years. Um, so the only thing that, that determines which house everybody is placed in is what you're looking for out of a community um, and, and what sort of uh, environment you wanna be in. You know, do you want peace and quiet to read all the time or do you, do you play music? You, you like practice guitar and you need to make sound. Uh, do you want a really tight knit community where you're always um, getting together and, and spending time in the common room? Or do you want to be sort of more removed and uh, uh, have a little bit more space uh, to yourself in your room? So all those sorts of questions we ask you on a questionnaire when, you, when you're admitted to Bennington and you enroll. Um, so very interesting campus life, the fact that we have 18 different communities within the larger community um, makes for a, a really vibrant social scene. And given that, that every student has a unique plan that they've built, um, there's a big emphasis in, in the student culture around uh, making and sharing work, whether that's um, you know, playing concerts, uh, you know, music concerts in houses or putting on poetry readings um, or, or, or giving presentations. Um, there's, there's a great uh, sort of bleeding of, of the, the work and the academic work and the creative work into the social life. Um, so a really interesting um, sort of dynamic on campus. Okay. So a few other things. Um, first, uh, what, we, what we look for in applications and sort of the, the application process for Bennington. Um, we are on the Common App and we encourage you to, to check us out on that. Um, we really look at the application as a, as a chance for you to present yourself as you want to be seen. Um, so really take advantage of the writing, especially the, the college essay and the supplemental essay questions. We have a few of our own. Um, really use those as an opportunity to, to give us a glimpse into how you think and, and uh, what sort of what sort of critical and creative thinking goes into the work that you wanna make. Um, our supplemental questions, there's three of them. Uh, you can pick two of them and answer. Uh, the questions are what attracts you to Bennington and why? Um, what would you wanna do for a field work term for an internship? And what book would you recommend our office to read and why? Um, so, you know, you can imagine based on the, the reflective essays and the, the plan essays that we require you to write as a student, we have a big emphasis on writing regardless of what you study. So we definitely care about, about the, the writing in, in the application. 
We also highly encourage uh, having an interview, signing up for an interview. It's not required for your application, but it's highly recommended. Um, it really gives us a great chance to get a sense of who you are uh, outside of the sort of data in your, in your application and maybe give you a chance to describe some things and some interests that maybe didn't have a place in the application. We wanna to get to know students um, you know, as, as individuals and get to know them as uh, people with interests. So please sign up for an interview if you're interested in, in applying. Um, we also encourage students to submit a portfolio of work that they've made, that they're proud of. Um, now this could be uh, essays that they've written, it could be a play that they've written, could be videos uh, of monologues that a student is performing, a song you recorded, um, art that you've made. Uh, it's not restricted to just one area of study. In fact, it's exciting when when we see students with a mix of, of different um, pieces of work that they're proud of. Uh, again, like the interview, it gives us a chance to get a little sense of what it would be like um, for you to be on campus and what, what kind of work, uh, maybe not these exact projects that, you, that you've done, but, but what kind of work do you wanna to continue to do? So interview and portfolio, we recommend doing that. We also have our own application called the Dimensional Application. And this is a portfolio style application um, where you, you really focus on that portfolio and you write a, a short essay describing uh, why you included what you included, why you're attracted to Bennington, you think Bennington is a good fit for you given uh, your interests, given your, your values, what you're looking for in education and the type of work you wanna do, can we support you? So you can also read about the dimensional application uh, if you look, look that up with Bennington College um, and you can, you can get started on, on writing that if, that's, if you're interested in that too. Um, a little bit about financial aid. Uh, Bennington offers two forms of our own financial aid, uh, merit scholarships based on academic achievement and need-based aid based on the information that we get from students' FAFSA's uh, profiles. So first, when a student submits their application, we look at the transcript and look at some other academic uh, areas like writing uh, letters of recommendation. Um, and we award a merit scholarship based on the student's academic achievement, um, regardless of who they are, where they come from, or, or uh, their family's financial situation. Next, we look at federal grants and loans, um, give you the chance to take out loans. And then we look at what we've left uh, the student and the family with, um, and we try to fill that in as much as possible with our own need-based aid. Um, so two forms of our own aid, plus federal grants and loans, scholarships, and need-based aid that we hope together can, can make Bennington a, a, an affordable option for students. Um, so that's, that's a bit about Bennington College. Um, if you are interested, you have questions, please, uh, email admissions at bennington.edu. Um, you can also email me. My name is Wesley Hoff, H-A-A-F. Uh, H -A -A -F. You can email me as well. Um, and we're happy to, to talk with you about the college or the application process. Um, thanks for, for listening and hope to hear from you. All set. Thank you so much, Wesley. It was great to learn about Bennington College. Uh, for those of you who are in attendance, there will be a brief survey at the end of this presentation and we'd love your feedback. Also, if you'd like to sign up for additional sessions, you can view our full schedule through November 6th at www.pacac.org slash virtual. You can also view this recording and many others at that same website, www.pacac.org slash virtual. Have a great day.